We are quite a few here at church today, and I know that you are also joining us, and we are very happy that you are here. Good morning again, and happy Sabbath to you all. I've been told that I can move between the organ and the piano, nothing else, right? I'll try to obey this commandment. It's always a pleasure indeed, Pastor, to visit you here. I always indeed, Sister Valsa knows, always inquiring about church here. And I know that the Lord has kept you safe and close and near to His heart. Amen? We believe that. Thank you, Sister Adele and Sister Valsa, for being our choristers today. And thank you for the story as well. And Sophia for the prayer. Did you hear her prayer? Praise the Lord. And Sister Jasmine, thank you. Thank you for this piece of music that prepared our hearts to receive the message from the Lord. And thank you kindly. Thank you very much. I don't think we have met, have we? It's the first time I'm meeting you. I'm honored. Friends, I hope you have your Bibles with you because we have come to a point where we need to go and study the Word of God. You have come to this morning to listen to the Word of God. And we are going to our Bible study, which will be mainly in the story that our sister... Remind me of the name of the sister who did the scripture reading? Simon. The scripture reading done by Sister Simon was in Genesis 22, and this will be our anchor text. Meaning, if you want to put something, a, a bookmark on that page, because we will flip the Bible in other in places, this is where I would like you to be. I'm happy to be here. I hope you are too. Let's go and study the Word of God. Let's pray together. Gracious Father, what a privilege to study your Word. Because your Word is light. Your Word is a lamp. So none of my brothers and sisters who are here today, none of us can walk in darkness as long as our lives, our steps are guided by your Word. Thank you for this Word. And may it find the place in our heart, but not only our heart, Lord, I pray that we will practice what we will hear from you today, because this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. As we begin, I would like to help you understand why the next 30 minutes of your time will not be wasted when we will look at Genesis 22. I want to give you two reasons why this Bible study is so important in your daily walk with Jesus. I want to give you first of all two reasons why Genesis 22 is such an important portion of Scripture. Are you with me? Why Genesis 22? And why is it so important? Now, you remember the word, as my sister read in Genesis 22, it begins by saying, God gave a test to Abraham. Did you read that from Scripture, right? Are we together? God gave a test to Abraham. I don't know about you, but when I was still in school, I did not like pop quizzes. You know, the teacher just comes and says, today there is a quiz, take a piece of paper and answer these questions. It looks like you are a teacher. Did you used to give pop quizzes? I hope not. Ah, I hate pop quizzes. There are, these are the tests. You come unprepared. There, today there is a test. Thank God that he never gives pop quizzes. Amen? He alerts you. He prepares you. And that's what we will see. That's what we will see today in Genesis 22. So Genesis 22 is a test. Right? Now, Genesis 22 is 
in the very middle of the whole book of Genesis. What am I saying? Genesis begins with a test in the Garden of Eden. You could eat all of these fruits from all these trees, but this one, no. So Genesis begins with a test. Are you with me? Those of you on Zoom, are you with me? Genesis begins with a test. Genesis ends with a test. And the Bible said, and Joseph tested his brothers. So Genesis begins with a test. Genesis ends with a test. And in the very middle, in the apex, in the highest place, point of the book of Genesis, you have Genesis 22, which is the test par excellence, which is the greatest of all the tests. Are you with me? The book of Genesis begins with a test, ends with a test, and in the very middle of it, I don't want to use big words here for you today, but those who have studied the book of Genesis tell us that Genesis 22 there is a chiastic structure, which means that the apex, the most important point, the summum of it all, is in Genesis 22. This is where you have the greatest of all tests. So today, this morning, we are going to look at the test par excellence that is in the book of Genesis. Are you with me? Wonderful. Second reason why you won't be wasting your time to study Genesis 22 is because of this. Abraham has had basically three tests in his life. Basically, his life can be summarized into three tests. Test number one, he needed to trust God to have a son, the son of the promise. You remember that? Did he trust God to have the son? No. So he failed test number one. Test number two, he needed to trust God that God could protect his wife by not having to lie. So test number two, he failed. Today, is test number three. I am happy to report, because we know the end of the story, test number three will be the only test that he will pass with flying colors. Why? That is, that's what we will study now. Why is Genesis 22 so important? It is in the middle of the book of Genesis, and it is the only test that Abraham passed with flying colors. All other tests, he failed, lamentably failed. Why Genesis 22? What can this story tell us today? Ah, my lips are burning because, hey, that's a very important Bible study. And I hope you have your Bibles with you. Adele, you have to have your Bibles. You have to have Scripture in your hand because we will go to the Word. Are we ready? Why is this so important? So come with me. Take your Bibles. Come with me. And we are going to read chapter 22. And we are reading from verse 2. All details are important. Then God said, Take your son. Oh, take who? Your son. Are you looking at my finger here? Your son. The first one. Take, take your son. And, and how is this son? He is your only son. Second, are you looking at me now? Take your son, your only son, and what else about, his, about this son? The son whom you love. Oh, there is an imperative. Take your son, your only son, and it becomes even closer, the son whom you love. An imperative, followed by, in this case, a person, and each time the description about this person 
is closer and closer and closer and nearer and nearer and dearer and dearer to Abraham. Take, I am taking time to lay the foundation for one of the greatest lessons you will hear this morning from the Bible. I'm not wasting your time. We are taking time to analyze this because this is key in understanding what will follow. An imperative followed by your son, your only son, the one whom you love. Are you with me? And how does verse 2 end? Verse 2 ends and says, Offer him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. So you won't have to guess. I guess you I will tell you about are we together what we have studied in Genesis 22 verse 2 an imperative followed by the son the only son the one whom you love and it ends by saying I will show you where to go and this is the order that God gives to Abraham because this is the test of today now, because you are a diligent student of the Bible, as I normally call you, you are an FBI. FBI stands for Fearless Bible Investigators, right? Because you are an FBI, you are a Fearless Bible Investigator, you should remember that elsewhere in Scripture, you have the same pattern of an imperative followed by three things that become closer and closer and closer and ending with, I will show you where. Where do you find that apart from Genesis 22? That's not a pop quiz. Come with me in Genesis 12. I love the word of God Genesis 12 come back come to me come with me to Genesis 12 and we will see there and this will be the first lesson there will be three this morning and this will be the first lesson Genesis 12 this is the first call that Abraham received from God this is the first time God called him to do something for him. How did God address him at that time? Genesis 12, verse 1. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Leave an imperative. Right? Leave. What? Look at my hands. Leave your country, your people, and the house of your father. Do you see that? Take your son, your only son, the one whom you love. Leave your country, your people, and the house of your father. He's zooming it down. And how does the verse end? And I will show you the land you have to go to. My friends, here is this lesson. When God allows a test to come your way, when God allows you to go through some any type of challenges in life, He tells you, hey, remember, today I'm in Genesis 22. Today I'm asking you, I'm commanding you to do something for me, He says. But remember, Abraham, in Genesis 12, I talk to you the very same way in Genesis 12. You were kissing goodbye to your past. In Genesis 22, you are bidding farewell to your future. Are you with me? No, not, you are not. In Genesis 12, he was leaving his country. So he was saying bye-bye to his past. But in Genesis 22, he is asked to kill his son. He is kissing goodbye to his future if he kills his son. So in both instances, God is saying, Abraham, a test has come your way. A difficult challenge has come your way. May it be health related, may it be finance related, may it be work related, whatever it is, whatever this big test that has come your way is God authorizes me to tell you today he just asks you 
Remember Abraham. My command of today is the same as the one in Genesis 12. By the way, Abraham, between 12 and 22, have I ever forsaken you? Never! Therefore, you can trust me when I am asking you now to go through this command. When this test comes your way. So this is why we have to remember the way God has led us thus far. That is why it is so vital that we remember. For Abraham, when he heard God speak in 22, his mind went something like, I remember that God. I remember the exact same way you spoke to me a few years back. Why do you want me? So God is helping him obey by recalling him his first call. So God wants you to pass the test. God wants you to be able to obey. And in doing so, the best strategy he has is to remind you of the way he has led you thus far. Can I have an amen for that? Can you count the blessings God has given to you up to today? Praise the Lord. I, there is one sentence that will summarize point number one, and then we'll go to point number two. You see, I have come across many, as a pastor, I have come across many church members who tell me, Oh, pastor, yes, I remember, yes, I did something wrong in the past. But you know, Pastor, ah, I cannot forget about the past. It is such a bad thing that I did. I wonder if God could forgive me. And even if He forgave me, have I forgiven myself? So listen to this. When I tell you this morning to refer to your past, like Abraham did by remembering Genesis 12, I am also reminding you, that your past is only a point of reference and not a place of residence. Are you with me? Remember this, not because it is from me. I have learned in my walk with God that even if He wants us to think and remember the past, the past is only a point of reference in time and never, ever a place of residence. Lesson number one, why was this such a wonderful experience for Abraham that he passed the test with flying colors? Because he remembered the way God called him and he remembered all the blessings he has received from God. Can you do that in your own spiritual walk with him? Can you do that in all your spiritual experience with him? Praise the Lord. That's why Genesis 22 is so important to the whole book of Genesis and to the life of Abraham. Are you ready for lesson two? If you are, I am too. Genesis 22, our anchor text. We will read now verse 5. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy... Now listen to me attentively, please. There's a problem with this text. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. Full stop. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. I have a problem with this verse. In fact, I have two problems with this verse. But we will dissect it together, and I promise you, you will hear the second lesson, and I pray that you will also enjoy that second lesson now taken from verse 5. My two problems with this text. Number one, you and I know that they were not going to worship. He was going to make a 
Sacrifice. Thank you. He was going, my sister. I can see you there, very attentive. He was going to kill his son. And because he was going to kill his... That, that's for our Zoom audience. Because he was going to kill his son, how could he say, we will come back? Are you with me? There is a big problem with this text. Problem number one, Sister Jasmine, they were not going to worship. They were going to sacrifice. Problem number two, because they were going to sacrifice, one of them would stay there dead and the other one would come. But Abraham said, we will come back. A better rendition, a more accurate rendition of this verse would have been the following. Stay here. I am going to make a sacrifice and I will come back. Are you with me? That would be more accurate. But why did Abraham say we are going to worship? And why did he say we will come back? We will come back. My friends, are you ready for the second lesson? I am ready. I am ready. I tell you, this is so powerful. In Genesis 22 is also a book of many first time. In the whole of the Hebrew scripture... I forgot to tell you that when we, were dis we were, when we were discussing verse 2. It is the first time in the Bible that the word love appears. You know, your son, your only son, the one whom you love. You remember that from verse 2? It's the first time that the word love appears in the Hebrew Scripture. And it's in Genesis 22. And it's the first time that the word worship appears in the Hebrew Scripture... And it is in Genesis 22. Wow, that's a wonderful text. And you will see by the end why this text is so wonderful. But let's answer our two questions. Why did he say we are going to worship? And why could he say, Sister Adele, we will come back? Hey, you are burning very close, very close to that. Very close. I give you 9 over 10. Okay, 9.2 over 10. Almost there. There is an element of faith. You are right. Now, the word, the, the, the answer, Brother Gideon, resides in the word, in the verb showing worship. Worship. I wish, I wish, that, that's the big advantage on Zoom. Everyone has a name, you know. <laughs> That's the big advantage on Zoom. So I can call on the name of people. I wish I could know. I wish I remember the name of each one of you here. And I would have called you by name too. The beauty of the word worship is this. The context in which the word we will worship is used, it is used in the context of creation. For example... This is the word, this is the word that is used, the word that is used in Psalm 100 verse 2 or Psalm 29 verse 2, where the word worship is used in the context of God the Creator. That's important. When Abraham says, I am going to worship God, he has in mind the God who creates, in other words, the word, the God who gives life. The God who is able to create something out of nothing. And I'm going to meet that God, Sister Valsa. I'm going to meet that God who gives life. Therefore, Adele, there is no way I can go and meet a God who gives life and come back with a dead body. I am going to meet with a God who has the power to create out of nothing. Therefore, my problems, let me tell you, I am going to worship God. My challengers, let me tell you, I am going to worship God this morning. Therefore, 
I am going to meet the God who created. Today is the creation Sabbath. You know that, right? We need to put a plug for that important day of creation. God is the one who creates. So Abraham is telling me to tell you, God, I will obey your command. But please, fulfill your promise as well. You are a God who gives life. So in other words, I want you to follow this, very important, and it links to what Adele will say, and we will substantiate this from the Word of God in a few seconds. In other words, God, Abraham is saying, God, because you are the Creator God, I know that even if I were to kill my son, because I'm going to worship you and meet with you in person, you have the power to bring him back to life. Amen? Do you have this assurance that Abraham had that my problems, you will not have the final word because I am going to meet with my God. And I'm going to worship him today at Hyattsville Church. So my problems, you will not have the final word. I am going to meet with God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we have this privilege of coming to worship you. And you are not any kind of a God. You are the creator God. And you see, my friends... That's why I gave my sister 9.2 over 10. Because when you approach creation, when you approach creation, you need to exercise faith. Why? I wish I could come close to you. I, you, know that, you know that they gave me this lapel mic for me to be able to move around, right? But because of the distanciation, the social distancing, I cannot come too close to you. But if I were able to do that, I would have come to you so close, even if you are on Zoom, and tell you this. Do you know why we should approach creation with faith? Because, listen to me attentively, please. The account of creation as mentioned in Genesis is the only account that is given in Scripture, follow me attentively, the creation account is the only account that is given in Scripture for which there was no human being present to attest to what has happened, to confirm what has happened. Are you with me? Think of all the episodes in Scripture. There was always a human being present to testify to what has happened, except for creation. For creation, no human being was present to testify, to attest to what has happened. Therefore, we are compelled to approach creation from the facet of faith, from the angle of faith. No one was there. And that's what was burning in the heart of Abraham. It was this faith because he's approaching the God who creates, the God who gives life. Therefore, there is no way for me to come back with a dead body. We will come back. By the way, that's just for you. We need to close in a few minutes, and we will. That's just for you, by the way. Have you noticed that the only definition of faith that we have in the Bible, Hebrews 11 verse 1, have you noticed that the only definition of faith that we have in the Bible is linked to creation? Reread at home Hebrews 11 verses 1, 2, and 3. That's the only description we have of faith in Scripture. And it is linked with creation. So that so much so that the text is telling me to tell you to believe in creation, you need to exercise faith. And that's what Abraham had. Now, do you know that the answer I gave you, that is, if he had killed his son, he knew that God, the powerful creator God, could raise him back to life. 
do you know that this is scripturally grounded? In other words, do you know that this answer does not come from my mind? This answer is from the Bible. Did you know that? Abraham? Yes, it's in Hebrews 11. That's why it's important to have our Bible study together. We will end. There is a third lesson, which is for me the best one of all the lessons we have seen. But let me take you to that. Hebrews 11. What, what am I demonstrating from the Word now? I'm demonstrating to you from the Word of God that Abraham's firm conviction was that even if he had to kill his son because of the faith he has in the God he is going to worship, the Creator God, he knew, he knew that God had the power to raise his son back to life. And where do I get that from? Hebrews 11 we can read verse 19, and then we'll go to the last lesson of today. Hebrews 11, verse 19. Are you reading with me? Abraham reasoned that God could raise him up even from the dead. Do you have that? Hebrews 11, 17 through 19. I've read only 19 to your hearing. But take time to read the rest. So Abraham is saying, we are going to worship. By the way, it looks to me that to worship... Hey brother, brother, I like your, co your comment about obedience this morning. Thank you for during cyber school. It looks to me, my brother, that worship and sacrifice, they can be used interchangeably. Because when we worship, we sacrifice, right? And when we sacrifice, we worship. So Abraham says, we are going to worship the Creator God. There is no way, I hope this has sunk in your mind and in your heart, there is no way that I'm going to meet with a God who creates and come back with a dead body. I know you can raise him back to life. Therefore, we will come back. Lord, increase my faith in you, Lord. Increase my faith in your word. Increase my faith in your promise. Because today his command of Genesis 22 is only a reminder of what he said in Genesis 12. The same way. Take your son, your only son, the one whom you love. I will show you. Leave your country, your, 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 country, your father's house and the household. And I will show you. Same way. When God gives you a command today, he recalls his first call. Is it easier to say goodbye to the past or goodbye to the future? I'll, let, I'll leave you to answer. But God tells me to tell you whatever it is. I am here. Can we end now? I, we will end. And we will go to verse, I think it is 8. Verse 8. Ah, this is powerful. And it is so powerful that I will need the help of my colleagues at the AV team to help me create the ambience for this problem. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now, let's read verse 8. We, we will take maybe five, six minutes here, and then we should be winding up. Abraham answered, no, not yet, not yet. Not yet, please. Thank you. Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Do you read that? Now, do you know that this verse is a nightmare for translators? It's a nightmare. That is, it has so many grammatical ex exceptions in Hebrew that it is a Yeah, you have heard me right. It's a nightmare for translators. Do you want me to show you? Next slide, please. Look at, look at how this text... Next slide, thank you. This is how this text is translated in these different versions. In the New King James Version, it says, God will provide for himself the lamb. In the NIV, which we read, God himself will provide the lamb. In the message, Eugene Peterson, he says, God will that there is a sheep. The New Living Version says, God will have for himself a lamb ready. So many translations because they are all confused. Because they, I wish I had time. 
I would show you the three grammatical exceptions that you have in Hebrew in that verse. So much so that, look, the translators are confused. What is happening here? When I was amidst that confusion, I was not sleeping. I decided to do something. I wrote to my lecturer of Hebrew at the university. Well, he was not my direct lecturer because I studied in Rwanda. He was not with us in Rwanda. But because he's a reference in the Hebrew in the Adventist church, I wrote to him. And he is a French-speaking man. Well, he's French, Jacques Ducan from Andrews University. I wrote to him and I said, Professor Jacques Ducan, I have a problem. Why so many translations here? I'm not sleeping. I I'm confused, prof. The Hebrew you taught me is not helping me. I am confused. Can you help me? He answered back and told me, I am writing a book on this verse. When it comes out, buy it and you will know. You know, that's why he is the number one in Hebrew, right? But I insisted, I say, whilst waiting for the book that I promised to buy, can you help me please? Are you ready? Are you ready for a theological bomb? Are you ready for a theological bomb? According to Jacques Ducan, listen to that, listen to that prophetic intuition of Abraham. Listen to that. Let's go to the screen. Last slide. Uh, last slide. According to Jacques Ducan, listen to that. The best translation of what is happening in verse 8 is this. God will provide himself as the lamb. I don't know about you, but I'm shivering. Each time I say this, I'm shivering. Goosebumps on me. Look at this intuition, the prophetic intuition of Abraham, where he could see that already in this verse, we are seeing the sacrifice of Jesus. God will provide himself as the lamb. My friends, in some instances in your life, God will send someone to help you out. But when it comes to salvation, he himself has to come. Amen? I can imagine that angel Gabriel said, God, let me go and save them. God says, no, not you. You are not able to do that. I can send you some other missions to help prophet Daniel. Gabriel says, no, let me go. No, you cannot do that. God, are you with me? God himself will come and be the Lamb. My friends, I've stopped by at Hyattsville this morning, while well, it's already afternoon now, to tell you that whatever test comes your way, whether it is a pop quiz or not, God tells me to tell you that He will see you through. His purpose is to help you obey by reminding you the way He led you in the past. His purpose is to remind you that you have come to worship the God who creates. Therefore, you cannot go back home with a dead body. And he tells me to tell you that at times he will send agents to help you out. But in the case of salvation, he himself has come to save us. A last verse for you, just in case you don't believe the pastor. I know you do. I know you do. <laughs> because it's from the Word of God, right? Read with me John 8, 56. John 8, 56. That's the prophetic intuition of Abraham. John 8, 56. It substantiates this explanation given by Professor Jacques Ducan. John 8, 56. Your father Abraham... Oh, we're talking about him. Are you with me, John, 50, John 8, 56? Your father Abraham... Rejoice at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it. He saw it. God Himself will pro God will provide Himself as the Lamb. He saw it, and He was glad. Wow! What a prophetic intuition from Abraham to dare say. 
God will provide himself. He saw it, said Jesus, and he was glad. My friends, I have to stop. But I will be reassured on my way back. Because I know that today, I know that wherever you are on Zoom or in the church, whatever be the test that comes our way, God is still the same. The way he speaks in 12 is the way he speaks in 22. You come and worship him, he will be the one who has the final word. And finally, he told me to tell you that he himself has come to see you through. May God bless us as we forge ahead in our spiritual walk with him. Because that's why this test was the only one that Abraham passed with flying colors. Because this test is at the very heart of the book of Genesis. Now that you know why, I will end and I will pray that the Holy Spirit will help you by His grace and by faith may be a, bear much fruit in your life so that Jesus can be glorified. And us here at Hyattsville, we will be enthused and preach this gospel to those who are around because we should not just receive and die of indigestion. No, let's go and share with others. Thank you for the privilege of sharing your pulpit with me today, Pastor. I pray that the Word of God will bear much fruit in our lives because this is my humble prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.